Hi, we're here today with Dr. Su Lin Chong. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Sunway Medical Center in Malaysia. And she has some very interesting views on technology in healthcare and standardization across the hospital and indeed across the nation. Dr. Chong, welcome and thank you. So you can look at me. Okay. So, um, Dr. Chong, this morning's session was on technology standardization. Mm. Yeah. Is it possible? Is it desirable? Well, see, in Malaysia, we started on telehealth and personal health records about 10, 12 years ago. And we tried to put in a, a kind of national standard um, that hasn't got anywhere. Um, the public hospitals that rolled out EMRs don't talk to each other. The private hospitals haven't a clue that there are these national standards. Um, it's gone a long way and, then, and now we don't have a champion to push it through. How desirable is it to achieve the whole new trail of standardisation across the country? It would be nice. It would be nice to have like a, a, like a template to say that, you know, these are your minimum standards of, of information that you should collect on each patient. But then you see at the moment we only concentrate on the hospital sector. We're not even going down to the family practitioner, the general practice, the community health centres. So if you really did that whole spectrum, it's huge, you know. And, and, and we need someone who, who's got the energy to, to really push it through and to engage. I mean, there's so many stakeholders um, and that, that's a key issue. Because you can't force it, you have to ask. And you see, at the private level, and again, which is what was discussed this morning, What's the incentive? Why would I spend X million dollars to put in an EHR or EMR when there's actually no immediate return on investment? You know, so you, you don't see um, um, a huge pull to do so it. So governments would really have to fund it if it would happen. Yeah, yeah, and and then it's about you know, do you want the latest touch screen? Do you want a huge, nice LCD monitor? Do you want a typist to type in your, you know, or do you force doctors to, to, to put in? What's about the Japan situation? Well, in Japan, I think that was interesting was that the very valid point as well is that there are many providers of EMR. There's a major players like Microsoft has now come in. And then there's a minor players. None of them talk to each other, they're all proprietary. And when you look at what is a very long term project, the worry always is that the smaller players, which may be cheaper, are going to go out of business and then you get stranded. You know? So in, in Japan, they looked at that and, and the fact that there were three major players, non, non, uh, no interoperability, very proprietary systems, and so they were looking at doing a national portal. Everybody uploads data into this portal and then pro other providers in the system pull. And, and patients can also pull from there. But it's, I think it's a very early pilot stage. And again, there was the question, who funds that? Is it government? Is it private sector? So what are the immediate needs then in a hospital system such as Malaysia? Well, we've never been able to read doctor's handwriting. So, you know, something that automates is going to be better or should reduce errors. Um, we don't... We don't do, the public sector is probably more disciplined, you know, when a patient's discharged, there's a discharge summary that goes to the GP, uh, into the community. The private hospital level, that's not often done. So there's no continuity of care, which means that you have patients coming back into a private hospital to see a consultant specialist for, for sometimes what is a primary care issue is it becomes an expensive thing you know to get continuity you keep coming back to see the specialist when actually a general practitioner should be able to follow you up finally is there anything interesting that you've learned at the summit this? <laughs> we've all got common issues <laughs> you know it's it's interesting because we thought um, in Malaysia you know there's still such a huge red bag of issues that we haven't sorted out and you come to a conference like this and you realize it's common across all the ASEAN you know some of us have done it a bit better some a bit and it's nice to hear from Japan because you we kind of assume that Japan would be a leader in many of these areas and then you know you see that they are struggling with their own issues similar as well it's good, it's good. okay great